Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jillian, better known as Crafty Fox on Instagram. Today, we're going to be discovering the beautiful Dahlia from my reference book, The Flower Color Guide. In The Flower Color Guide, there are so many beautiful reference photos of flowers and it's a great way for us to discover different floral shapes, petals, as well as forms. Now let's look at today's Dahlia. Before we dive into today's painting, I want to share with you that next week we are going to be painting the ranunculus. Now that we have something to look forward to for next week, let's talk about the painting that we are here for today, which is the beautiful Dahlia. One of the key ideas I want us to remember is that the Dahlia consists of many petals and it's not our job to paint every petal, we are going to be painting shadows instead. With every painting session, I often have a mantra next to me and this here is to remind you to be kind to yourself as you are painting. I am starting off by putting down liquid watercolours on my ceramic plate. These liquid watercolours are from Dr. Martin PH and Schmick. I will list them down in the description below. Now, the colours that I've selected here are not the same as the reference photo and I want you to think about colours that speak to you or that you really like. In this case, I'm picking a majority of warm colours with a pop of cool colours for my shadows. Now, let's start off by pre-wetting the paper. So, I've wet it with clear water and following which I am dropping down paint into my wet paper. This is why my flower shape looks so dispersed and it has very soft edges. After you've done the first initial light layer, you can go in with darker tones or darker values and find the center of the flower so that you've got an idea of where exactly you are going to build the petals and shadows around in this flower. Now the thing about wet on wet is that it can look like there's a loss of control as your paint starts moving further and further away from where you had put it down. It can also feel difficult to identify where the last brush stroke was, especially since it was so wet when you put it down. Now, if I can be honest with you, when I did this painting, I did feel very discouraged in the initial stages because I felt like I couldn't find where my flower was. It felt like such a blob and I was struggling to put in more colors to try and find the definition and find where I wanted to put the petals as well as the shadows. So as you're watching me paint in this part, you would see that I'm trying to drop in paint. I'm trying to lift paint as well using a dry brush brush while it's still wet kind of to define the flower petals as well as try and figure out the floral direction but really I was struggling because the paper was so wet and at the same time I felt like the paint kept moving there was very little definition sharing this with you just allows me to showcase to you that no matter where you are at in your journey, in your painting, we're always going to have different times where we still struggle with our practice. Even when you want to film a YouTube video and showcase it on your channel. So at this point when I was struggling and adding in more paint, more color and everything was just dispersing out, it looked like a blobby mess. It kind of released some pressure for me because it felt like since it wasn't working out, I was just going to play and go with whatever it was. So what I decided to do was I continued to drop in paint to try and define areas of the flower and then I decided to just blow dry it to make sure that it was fully dry and that's where I started to use my brush to create marks instead and layer on top. So you would see that subsequently when the layer is fully dry, I picked up some burnt raw amber and I just put down the paint together mixed with opera rose and 
making marks kind of saved this painting because it felt like I was creating definition that I was looking for all this while. So I'm basically using my brush, traveling around and building the shadows that are around this flower. So right now what I'm doing is I'm literally painting shadows. I'm not painting petals because I'm assuming that the petals are the background blob that I've already created. So I'm eyeballing where I want my center to be. This is so that I know where the petals should be and how the shadows would be formed. I'm also going in with darker tones to define where it is closer to between where the petals are. So I'm using some crimson rose as my centers. I'm also using the side of my brush with my flat brush that I'm using, which is from Silver Black Velvet. So like I said, all the supplies are going to be listed in the description below. Now I'm working on my second flower and I'm doing the same effect where I'm basically just painting some parts of the petals and some parts of the shadow. I'm also keeping in mind that... I don't want to overdo it because then it would also remove away that blob layer which I was trying to save earlier and I kind of want to keep it there because that's going to be the color of the petals that is in this painting. As I'm painting, I'm also mindful of trying to define where the center is and usually the center is where the details are a lot smaller, petals are also smaller, which means that your brush strokes have to be smaller. I am using this beautiful color from Sinalier called Caput Mortem and again I'll list it in the description below. I've mixed it with a little bit of burnt sienna as well as opera rose so that there's harmony in this painting because most of the colors listed here so far are burnt sienna and opera rose. Now as I said in the beginning, use the color that best speaks to you. Depending on your mood or what you feel like today, maybe you are drawn to cooler temperature colors or like me, I'm painting with warmer temperature colors. So one of the rules that you want to think about when it comes to color composition is the 70-30 rule. So make sure that you've got a predominant temperature in your painting. So in this case, I'm painting predominantly with warm colors. So that's going to be my 70%. And then I will add in pops of cool colors, which are my 30%. So just something for you to think about. At the same time, adjust your color values along the way. So you can see that I have added in water to lighten some of my petals that are broader and bigger towards the sides and the bottom. I would encourage you to vary your brush strokes. Use the tip of the brush, the side of the brush to get different shapes. Wriggle your brush around to see what you can come up with. This is so that you are painting using your brush rather than drawing with your brush. I am now adding a third flower on the side and I'm just using my brush to rotate add strokes all around and then later on go in and add definition. One tricky thing about the Dahlia flower is that you might be wondering when you should paint the petals and when you should be painting the shadows. There's no real formula, but the important thing that you want to learn is that the flower petals are small towards the center and they get bigger and bigger as they go outwards. So that's a key idea that you want to have in mind. So 
when you are placing your flower, make sure that you have bigger and broader petals towards the bottom and smaller and smaller ones that are moving towards the center. After parts of my petals have dried, I am layering with some neon paints. By doing so, you would definitely get very hard edges. And what I mean by that is that the paint is not going to blend into each other because it is dried at the bottom. At the same time, when you are layering a color on top of another color, you want to keep in mind that because watercolor is transparent, the color at the bottom is going to show through the color on the top. So make sure that when you add a color that's on the top, it's not going to be a complementary or contrasting color because then it might end up becoming brown instead. So something to keep in mind when you are layering colors on top of colors. I'm now adding my fourth flower at the bottom and you can see that it is mainly putting down marks. The flowers at the bottom and at the sides are of less definition. They also have less detail because I want to show the viewer where their focal point should be, which is usually the flower in the center. So make sure that when you are painting, you also keep that in mind so that you don't feel like you have to paint every flower in your painting. To create some visual interest in my painting, I've decided to add a pop of contrasting cool color. And even though it's a cool color, I've still chose a warm version of it. So what I'm using is a phalo mineral blue and I've mixed it with Cinereus blue from Sinaila paints. And I'm just basically dabbing along the edges, around the sides and maybe somewhere in the middle of the dahlias as well. I feel like it gives the painting a little bit of retro look. So that's something that you want to try out as well. And then following which I mixed a little of that blue mixture with my current orangey red mixture to create this fifth flower that I'm painting here. Similar to all the other flowers, I started with the outside petals and I'm slowly moving inside. My outside petals are a lot bigger, broader and fluffier, while my inside petals or shadows are actually a lot smaller. So as you're painting, think about whether you want to paint the petals or the shadow. It is important to balance between the two because we can't paint every petal. However, painting parts of the shadow allows you to also showcase the contrast between the negative and positive space. So if you're keen to find out more about negative and positive painting, this is covered in my online mini workshop called From Flat to Fabulous, where I take you through how we are going to paint in monochrome and it also allows you to understand color values and how to use it with negative and positive painting. So you can find out more about the workshop in my link below in the description. Now that we have defined the flower, we're going to move on to painting the stems and the leaves. I am mixing some cobalt green with phalo mineral blue and a touch of snailier red. This gives me a very dull green 
and I want that because I'm starting that as my base for my green. I want it to be warm because I want it to match with the flowers. While the paint is still wet, I've added in some cobalt green because it gives a very nice pop of colour. I'm also going to be wetting the surface with water so that I can paint more green leaves in a very soft fashion. However, I used the wrong cup so you would see that instead of clear water, I had used my dirty water. So not to worry, I used my dry brush to mop it up and remove away that red tinge. Subsequently, I just painted using cobalt green over that area and you can see because the area is wet, the leaf shape is very soft, the edges are dispersed and in the areas that are not wet, you can see that the edges are a lot harder, so more defined and you don't see them as dispersed or soft. So I'm just going around and painting around the flower right now using cobalt green and phalo green light, this mixture, and I am alternating between a warm green and a cool green just so that it again gives the painting some depth. I want you to pay attention to the way I hold the brush. I'm literally just holding it very lightly and swishing around and moving around with it in a very light fashion. I'm not holding it tightly. This is because I want my strokes to be loose and fluid and if you're holding your brush really tight, that's going to give you a lot tighter strokes and it's going to be a lot more rigid. So hold your brush lightly and further away from the brush tip if you want big broad loose strokes and closer to the tip if you want to work on details or depth certain areas. You can also experiment with holding the brush really far away like I just did. So this gives you a lot more movement in your painting. decided to add a clear coat of water and this helps me to paint some background leaves that are at the back maybe a little more faint with less detail a bit more blurry and the best way for me to do that is by using the wet on wet technique where the paper is wet and I drop in paint this is going to give me very nice soft blurry greens in the background that appear as though I've got some foliage at the back.
because there are some white spaces i am just going in with this hobain color that i love so much it's called june brilliant number no. two i'm going to list it in the description below this color is a very nice beige peachy tone and it matches very well with the current background that i have I am just dabbing in a few small little strokes all around. So this gives a hint of possibly background flowers at the back and it allows the viewer to kind of fill in the gaps on their own. As I'm moving on with this painting, one of the biggest struggles is knowing when to stop. And the best way to know when to stop is if you stand up or if you actually walk away from your painting. So for me, I'm actually painting standing up right now. So this gives me an opportunity to see the whole painting in a broader and bigger perspective. And it also allows me to see which areas I need to add more depth or shadow in as you are painting make sure that your painting has three different color values you've got your lightest tone your mid tone as well as your dark tones following which you also want to make sure that you are balancing out the colors so you don't want to have too many oranges bunched up on one corner of your painting however you want to slowly balance it out so if i've added blue to a certain flower i might want to distribute it and add it a little in each flower or different elements so that's exactly what i'm doing right now as i'm finishing off with this painting I want to express my gratitude for having you here with me, painting along, watching me paint. It's been so fun to share with you my process as well as my struggles, which I brought up earlier. Can you imagine that I had almost abandoned this painting and saw it as just a blobby mess, but instead I decided to explore further, layer on, add on more marks, and this painting is now one of my favorite paintings to date and it's because of the story behind the painting so with every painting that you have don't forget to keep it because it's a story that is unique to you so thank you so much for being here it's been really fun hit the subscribe button if you really enjoyed this video and i can't wait to paint with you again